Imagine Elon Musk, the visionary entrepreneur who transformed Tesla from a risky startup into a global empire of electric mobility, stepping into a vehicle that neither required charging stations nor relied on a single drop of fuel, a vehicle that seemed to bend the very laws of physics themselves. But here's the twist. This groundbreaking car did not roll out of Silicon Valley's polished labs or Tesla's vast Giga factories. It was not engineered by teams of PhDs with multi-million dollar budgets. Instead, it was born in Africa, in Zimbabwe, crafted by the hands and mind of Maxwell Chikumbuzo, a self-taught inventor whose name was still unfamiliar to much of the world. This was not a fragment of science fiction or the wild exaggerations of an eccentric tinkerer. It was a real moment in history. The day Elon Musk rode inside Africa's first truly self-powered car. The encounter was shrouded in secrecy, a meeting far removed from press conferences and Twitter announcements. One quiet afternoon in California, Musk's private jet landed. Not at Tesla's headquarters in Austin or at SpaceX's bustling facility in Hawthorne, but at a discreet testing ground hidden from prying eyes. Waiting there, dressed simply and humbly, was Maxwell, standing beside his gleaming silver electric vehicle a car that had already stirred up controversy, disbelief, and fierce debates across the world. Rumors surrounded it. Some called it a fraud, others claimed it was a suppressed miracle. For Musk, however, rumors and headlines were meaningless. He had built his life and fortune on hard proof, on seeing results where others only saw dreams. He arrived with a small contingent of Tesla engineers, men and women who carried tablets, scanners, and data instruments, their expressions a mixture of skepticism and curiosity. As Musk approached Maxwell, there was no media fanfare, no applause, just a quiet handshake between two men who, though separated by geography and upbringing, both carried visions of reshaping humanity's future. The first test was about to begin. Maxwell slid open the door of the sleek silver car and with a respectful gesture invited Musk inside. Musk smirked slightly, his analytical mind already running a dozen hypotheses, but he climbed in, settling into a minimalist cockpit unlike any he had seen before. There were no battery indicators, no charging ports, no familiar diagnostics, only a futuristic dashboard illuminated by a single glowing phrase, powered infinite range. The silence was eerie as the car began to roll forward, gliding smoothly onto the test track. Musk leaned forward, studying every curve, every sound, every flicker of light across the console. Where is the battery system? Where's the charging interface? He demanded, his tone sharp, suspicious, hungry for answers. Maxwell smiled faintly and replied with calm assurance. You'll see. The acceleration came next, smooth, silent, powerful. But it wasn't speed that unsettled Musk. It was the realization that unlike any EV he had ever designed or tested, this car showed no signs of depleting stored energy. It was not consuming. It was generating. Tesla's engineers quickly noticed it, too. They exchanged nervous glances, their fingers dancing furiously across their devices as they captured live readings. One of them whispered in disbelief, This shouldn't even be possible. Musk. Usually the master of composure leaned back, his lips pressed into a thin line, his normally confident posture replaced with something closer to unease. The hum of the motor filled the silence as lap after lap the car performed flawlessly, the power output steady, unbroken, endless. Finally, Musk turned toward Maxwell with a rare expression of vulnerability. If this is real, he admitted, his voice quieter than usual, the entire energy industry is finished. Maxwell's reply was steady, almost prophetic. It is real. And Africa is ready. But Musk was not content with a few smooth laps on a controlled track. He demanded a greater test. Take it outside, push it. I need to see this on real roads. Maxwell nodded and drove them out of the testing facility. Soon they were navigating city streets then highways, dirt roads, steep inclines, every terrain Musk could conjure as a challenge. Crowds began to notice. People pointed, stunned not only at the sight of a mysterious African electric vehicle, but at the figure seated in the passenger seat, Elon Musk himself, watching intently. With each mile, the readings remained steady. 
The energy output did not waver, did not drop, did not strain. It was as though the vehicle drank from an invisible, endless stream of power. Musk's mind raced. This was not just an innovation. This was a revolution. Still skeptical, he ordered his engineers to push the machine to its limits. They connected diagnostic equipment, activated every energy-consuming feature at once, climate control at maximum, acceleration stress tests, full electronic load. Any ordinary EV, even a Tesla, would have drained its reserves within minutes. Yet Maxwell's car hummed steadily, the generator core glowing faintly beneath the hood, resonating with a mysterious efficiency no one could fully explain. Musk crossed his arms, his expression unreadable. For the first time in years, the man known for always having an answer was silent. Later, in Maxwell's modest workshop, Musk finally demanded to see beneath the hood. What lay before him was unlike any motor he had known. No massive battery packs, no hidden fuel compartments, just a compact box-like device pulsing faintly with energy, a crystalline core surrounded by resonance circuits. This defies known physics, one of Musk's engineers muttered. Maxwell's reply was simple, but it struck the room with weight. Physics hasn't caught up yet. For hours, Musk walked the workshop probing, questioning, analyzing, pacing like a restless scientist who both feared and desired the truth. His empire was built on the cutting edge of innovation. Yet here before him was something that could leapfrog everything Tesla had achieved. Finally, he turned to Maxwell. If this scales, Musk admitted, charging stations, fuel networks, even power grids, they all become obsolete. Maxwell nodded with conviction. That's the point. Energy shouldn't be sold. It should be free. What followed was less a business meeting and more a moral crossroad. Musk, lowering his voice, warned Maxwell, if this technology gets in the wrong hands, if oil industries, governments, or energy giants catch hold of it, they'll bury it. Or worse, they'll take it from you. Maxwell's gaze was steady, unwavering. I've lived with that threat for years. But the world is ready. You saw it yourself. This isn't a prototype. It's real. And it works, Musk's engineers whispered urgently among themselves. Elon, if this scales, Tesla's entire infrastructure, billions of dollars, factories, superchargers, it all becomes worthless. For once, Musk didn't reply immediately. His mind churned with the implications. This was bigger than Tesla, bigger than Mars, bigger than anything he had built. At last, he asked quietly, what do you want from me? Maxwell's answer was not money or patents or factories. What I want is freedom. The freedom to deploy this technology without being silenced, shut down, or bought out. If you truly believe in innovation for humanity, then stand with me. Shield this invention from those who will try to bury it. What neither man knew was that outside their secretive circle, the story had already slipped out. Someone had captured shaky footage of Musk inside the mysterious car. The video hit social media like a firestorm. Elon Musk caught testing Africa's free energy car. What is Tesla hiding? Within hours, hashtags trended globally. Oil stocks began to sink. Governments demanded answers, and investors panicked. News anchors replayed the clip endlessly. Analysts dissected Musk's tense expression frame by frame. Some argued it was staged, others swore it was genuine. But one question echoed worldwide. What exactly did Elon Musk see in that car? Governments convened emergency meetings. Intelligence agencies flagged the invention as a security risk. Lobbyists pushed for immediate investigations. At Tesla headquarters, executives panicked. Decades of infrastructure, gigafactories, superchargers, and battery research were suddenly at risk of becoming obsolete. Some urged Musk to distance himself. Others pressured him to seize control of Maxwell's work. But Musk could not shake the feeling he had during the ride, that liberation was possible, that humanity stood at the threshold of energy freedom. Meanwhile, Maxwell's modest workshop in Zimbabwe became the epicenter of a storm. Surveillance cars appeared nearby, calls flooded in with impossible offers of money, and journalists camped outside his gates. Still, Maxwell refused every offer. This isn't for sale. It's for humanity, he insisted. But deep inside, he knew this was no longer simply about engineering. It was about survival. Late one night, a jet landed quietly in Harare. Musk stepped off in secrecy, wearing a cap to hide his face. 
He met Maxwell in person again, this time without his entourage. Inside the workshop, Maxwell revealed more of his invention, opening the shielded casing of the generator core. What Musk saw stunned him, a crystalline, almost organic structure glowing faintly, pulsing with resonance. This is not about batteries, Maxwell explained. It's about tuning into the energy the universe already gives us. Musk leaned closer, mesmerized, torn between scientific skepticism and undeniable proof. The leaks continued, and soon the story exploded into a geopolitical conflict. Governments, corporations, and intelligence agencies scrambled to control or suppress the technology. Maxwell's workshop became surrounded by threats. Musk warned him, If you don't control the narrative, they will. Days later, the two men stood side by side on a global live stream broadcast. Musk spoke first. Today you are not looking at a product. You are looking at the future. A self-powered vehicle that doesn't need charging, doesn't pollute, and doesn't depend on fossil fuels. Maxwell built it. And it works! Gasps echoed across continents. Oil markets collapsed, politicians panicked, but ordinary people cheered. In Africa, streets filled with celebration. For the first time, the world was not just importing innovation from the West. The world was looking to Africa as the source of its technological future. Later... In a private moment, away from the cameras, Musk turned to Maxwell. You've changed everything, even me. Tesla was never about cars. It was about accelerating the world toward sustainable energy. But you, you've skipped us ahead by decades. Maxwell smiled softly. It was never about beating Tesla. It was about proving that humanity already has what it needs, if we dare to use it. Behind them, the silent glowing car stood like a symbol, almost alive, representing freedom and possibility. The world remained divided, some fighting to control it, others praying to protect it. But one truth was undeniable. The age of self-powered technology had begun, and there was no turning back.